Greetings, my name is Chaplain Bob Walker, and I call my ministry Light of the World Ministries from John 8, 12. If you want to know what I believe, I believe in the King James Bible from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22, from cover to cover. And basically, I adhere to the Nicene, well, I should say the Apostles' Creed, and the Greeks gave us the creed. The creed means I believe. Being that the New Testament was written in Greek, what can I tell you? They ran with it. But this is going to be on, is repentance a work? Now, the Independent Fundamental Baptist Churches, the IFB, people like Stephen Anderson, will tell you that, yeah, you don't need to repent, and all you have to do is believe on Jesus. Well, let's compare that with Scripture. Get your King James Bible and turn to Revelation chapter, tw uh, chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus... Right Now remember, G, uh, Paul wrote a, an entire book called Ephesians. That's what the uh, people in Ephesus were called. They were called Ephesians. People that live in America are called Americans. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right. These things, these things, saith he that holdeth the seven... All right, so he says, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Now, this is Jesus speaking. And thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. So he's just covered all their good points, right? Now, verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. What? But, 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 Jesus is talking to the believing church in Ephesus. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. Repent of what? Their unbelief? Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Except thou repent. Except thou repent. Except thou repent. So Jesus is telling the believing church in Ephesus to repent. Repent of what? Their unbelief? Really? Is that what uh, the IFB doesn't understand? And then what they'll do is they'll tell you that, well, you know, in Jonah, in the book of Jonah, God repented of destroying Nineveh because they believed the preachings of Jonah. Yeah, but the thing is, comparing repenting of a sinful human, and if you don't know that humans are sinful and need a Savior, uh, you don't understand the Bible at all. But comparing us in our sinful nature to a sinless God, you know, if you're comparing our repenting with a sinless, perfect God repenting, it doesn't mean the same thing. Okay, it's different. 
God repenting. God doesn't repent of sin. But that what they'll do is they'll try to confuse the issue and tell you, oh, well, you know, it just, you know, we just have to repent of our unbelief. Well, what about Judas Iscariot? Judas Iscariot, did, did Judas Iscariot absolutely believe in Jesus? I say he did. But is he saved? Well, how, I don't know. Uh, you know, let's go to the Bible. So, you know, you got to understand, Jesus told the believing church in Ephesus to repent. So they can't, how can a believing church repent of their unbelief? So if they're not talking about unbelief, what are they talking about? Verse 5, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works Works? Oh my God, that sounds like works-based salvation, lordship salvation. Jesus is telling them to do the first works. Jesus is telling them to do works. Huh. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Wow, Jesus is telling them to do works. Wow, that's... That sounds like works makes salvation, doesn't it? So, was Judas Iscariot, who stayed with Jesus for years and probably absolutely believed in him, saved? Well, let's take a look at what the Bible says. John chapter 6, verse 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. So, can anybody be saved if they believe? Are you going to tell me that Judas Iscariot didn't believe in Jesus? Really? Now remember, in Je uh, Revelation 2, Jesus told the church at Ephesus to do the first works. Ooh, works-based salvation, they'll tell you. But that's Jesus speaking, not me. Don't listen to me. Now how about the book of James, chapter 2. Uh, you know who James was? He grew up with a guy uh, named Jesus, and he had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. He knew, I think he knew the works of Jesus and his words very well. Uh, let's see, James chapter 2, verse 14. Listen carefully. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Did uh, Judas Iscariot have faith but without works? Hmm. Verse 15, uh, James writes, If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, notwithstanding Ye give them not, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? In other words, you tell them, oh, go away, be warm and, and full, but you're too stinking lazy to give them a bowl of soup. You'd rather take the leftovers that you're going to have from dinner and throw it in the garbage than give it to, you know, a brother or a sister and you got five coats in your closet, and it's cold outside, and you haven't worn four of them in five years, and you won't take one of your coats out of your closet and give it to them? And you're going to say, oh, well, I have faith in God. You want to read it again? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding Ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? 
Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. You see, works are proof of what you believe. And people will tell you, oh, well, if you do works, oh, you're earning your salvation. That's lordship salvation. That's the fruit of the independent fundamental Baptist church uh, that I see on the internet. You know, but James says, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Verse 18, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? What about the devils? The devils believe in God. Are they saved? No. Their works are evil. Oh, but all you got to do is believe in Jesus and everybody can be saved. That's what, that's what the IFB churches tell you. Well, I guess Satan's going to get saved because he absolutely believes in Jesus Christ, is doesn't he? You think I'm taking this too far? No. What about the man of sin in the book of Revelation, the son of perdition? Is the man of sin the son of perdition? What about the Antichrist? Can they be saved? Uh, Pastor Anderson will tell you, well, yeah, they could be saved. All they got to do is believe in Jesus. Well, what does Paul say in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1? I mean, sorry, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The second book of Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Now this is talking about end times. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Do you know what perdition means? It means to fall. And that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. This guy's born to go to hell. I mean, really, you think this guy can just believe in Jesus and he's going to be saved? I don't think so. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. People, this is written almost 2,000 years ago. And it hasn't happened yet. Can this guy be saved by believing in Jesus? I don't think so. I don't think so. All right, can everybody hear the gospel? Well, let's read the words of Jesus. Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And we're not talking about somebody with a singer sewing machine. We're talking about a farmer putting seeds in the ground. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell on stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. 
but other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now listen carefully. Listen very carefully. And the disciples came and said unto him, said unto who? Said unto Jesus. And they are asking a question. They said, why speakest thou unto them in parables? You know, why speakest thou unto them in parables? You know, hey, Jesus, why don't you talk to them plainly? Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Verse 11, words of Christ in red. Let's read what Jesus has to say. He answered, he who? Jesus. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. What? Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Wow. All right, let's take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Now I've got, before you, I make this point, there's more coming after this. Okay, God, sometimes Satan deceives and sometimes God deceives. Does God want everybody saved? I, you know, let's take a look. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Okay, sometimes Satan blinds them. Now let's go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, maybe we should just read the whole thing. Well, I tell you what, let's go somewhere else and we'll come back to this. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel, which is Old Testament, chapter 14. This is something the IFB churches will never, never, never touch. Me, I'm not afraid because it's the word of God. You know, I don't claim to have all the answers, but I hate I hate when people, either through ignorance or outright deception, never read certain things in the Bible. And the IFB says, well, we don't like, uh, you know, denominational groups, like you got the Southern Baptists, and then they have a convention, 
And then they have the top leadership that tells the churches underneath them what to believe. And then the IFB will say, well, you know, well, we don't do that. We, we just got, you know, we're just one little tiny church. But the pastor, the pastor acts like the organization that tells his people, oh, no, you're going to believe this or you're not a member of our church. So if I tell you that uh, repentance is a work, you better believe it, because if you question me, you're out. And trust me, I've, I've seen it happen because it's happened to me many, many times. But let's read Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 7. For every one of the house of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me, and setteth up his idols, and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity, and what's iniquity? It's sin. And putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself, and I will set my face against that man. Why? Because he's got sin in his life. You know, oh, well, you don't have to repent of sin. Just believe in the Lord Jesus and you're going to be saved. It's works-based salvation, right? Just like James chapter 2 taught on, right? Works without, uh, faith without works is dead, being alone, right? Where do they come up with all these doctrines? Verse Ezekiel 14.8. Well, and, uh, all right, so I, the Lord, will answer him by myself, and I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off, cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people, Israel. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. Why? Because they didn't repent. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity, the punishment of the prophet, shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. God will deceive people when they refuse to give up their wickedness, people. Think about it. Satan absolutely believes in God. Absolutely. But he's evil. And people that follow wickedness God will cut them off. God will deceive them. God will destroy them. Ezekiel chapter 14 makes that plainly clear. Did you know that God will send a lying spirit to deceive you if you're into wickedness? Now, if you don't know it, Ahab was one of the most evil wicked kings in Israel ever. Matter of fact, let's take a look at that real quick. All right, in 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 30, And Ahab the son of Amri did evil, evil, evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. He didn't repent. 1 Kings 16.33, And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Do you get the idea? Ahab would not repent of his wickedness. All right, now, in 2 Chronicles chapter 18. 2 Chronicles chapter 18, verse 1. Now, Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah, and Ahab was the king of Israel. They were two different kings, 
two different peoples, two different capitals. Israel and Judah are not the same people. I know that your demon nominational preachers tell you they are, but they're not. They had different kings, different capitals, different land areas, different people, and they had wars against each other. That's like telling people that the, the North and the South in the American Civil War were the same people. Well, yeah, they were all Americans, but no, they weren't the same. And, and the southern Israel and uh, southern Judah and northern Israel are not the same. Let's take a look at verse 1. Second Chronicles chapter 18, verse 1. Now Jehoshaphat, he's the king of Judah, he's a good king. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. That Ahab's the evil king of Israel. And joined in affinity, it means they're working together. Verse 2, And after certain years he went down to Ahab to Samaria. Samaria was the capital of Israel. Jerusalem was the capital of Judah. And after certain years he went down to Ahab to Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him and persuaded him to go up with him to rape Ramoth Gilead. And Ahab, king of Israel, said to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. Did you catch that? And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. Not the same people, okay? So he said unto him, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? See, he... Uh, Ahab's having a war. And he, Jehoshaphat, and he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, and we will be with thee in the war. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of prophets four hundred men. He, the wicked king, gathered prophets of four hundred men, and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? I guess Jehoshaphat didn't, didn't trust Ahab's prophets. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. The king of Israel hated God's prophet, but I hate him, for he never prophesieth good unto me, but always evil. The name is Micaiah, the son of Imlah, and Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch Quickly, Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes, and they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. Remember, the Lord said he would deceive the prophets? Oh yeah. We just read that, right? In Ezekiel. Verse 10. And Zedekiah, the son of Chenanah, had made him horns of iron, and said, Thus saith the Lord, With these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. In other words, I'm not going to go with the crowd if the Lord tells me otherwise. And when he was come to the king, verse 14, And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, Go ye up, and prosper. 
and they shall be delivered into your hand. See, he's probably mocking him in this, you know, in his tone of voice. And the king said to him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Then he said, Ah, now the prophet's going to say the real thing. Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? Again he said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. Here's the, the true prophet of God speaking. Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, and all the host of heaven, and the host of heavens, the angels, people, and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, listen carefully, who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Fall what? Fall dead, people. Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake, saying after this manner, another saying after that manner. Then there came out a spirit. Now this is not necessarily an evil spirit. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord, the Lord, not the devil. Sorry about that. I hate phones. Verse 22, 2 Chronicles 18, 22. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. Let's go back to verse 21. And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now therefore behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. See, it's the Lord that put the lying spirit in the mouth of those false prophets. Not the, not the devil, not Satan, the Lord. All right, let's go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I guess we're going to read the whole thing because I'm going to make one more point, okay? You see, Ahab was evil. Ahab would not repent of his evil. And Judas Iscariot absolutely believed in Jesus Christ. I mean, come on, people. And Satan also believes. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you I told you these things? And now ye know that 
And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. This guy is going to do miracles, people. Miracles. False, well, false lying miracles. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Listen carefully. Verse 11. And for this God, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. God's going to send them a strong delusion. Do you know what a delusion is? It's believing something that's not true. God's going to send them, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. God's going to do this. God. Does it sound like all people can be saved? I, I don't know. It just it doesn't sound like it to me. Verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you. What? I thought we chose God. That's what the IFB says. It says, no. It says, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Oh my God, the Bible teaches Calvinism. Ooh! God forbid you believe that God has a chosen people. I mean, really? Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word, and work. Work. Oh my God. In every good word and work? Oh, Paul's teaching workspace salvation. Doesn't it sound like that, huh? All right, let's read John chapter 6 and verse 70 again. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you? Did, did the apostles choose Jesus or did Jesus choose the apostles? Jesus walked up to Peter and said, Follow me. Now, Peter did, Peter could have said, well, I, who are you? I, I'm not following you. I got work to do here. I got to do some fishing. That's true. But Jesus answered them, have not I chosen you 12? And one of you is a devil. And he's talking about Judas here, Iscariot. John 15, 16, Jesus said, ye have not chosen me. But I have chosen you. Jesus made the choice. I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. What is fruit, people? Fruit is our works. That ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Wow. John 15, 19, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own, but because ye are not, because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. 
And of course, 2 Thessalonians 2.13 again, But we are bound to give thanks all the way to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. You know, and I don't mean to be too hard on the IFB. They've got a lot of good things going on. I'm glad they uh, exposed uh, Talmudism and Kabbalah and Zionism and dispensational theology. I do absolutely do not love any of those things. I absolutely detest Schofield and his his Bible. Um, they've got a lot of good things going on. But are they right about everything? No. Am I right about everything? Probably not. I, I mean, let's face it. None of us has it all figured out. I mean, you know, even Jesus, when, when they asked him when he was coming back, he didn't know. So if Jesus doesn't know everything, how in the world am I going to know everything? In Mark 13, and it's also, you could look it up in Matthew 24. It's the uh, end time verse. Mark 13, verse 30. Verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth, sh heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day, what day? The second coming. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. See, even Jesus didn't know when he's going to return. Only God the Father knows when he's going to tell Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, go, my son, get your bride, the church. Go get them. It's time. I'm, I've had enough. And Jesus in verse 33 says, Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. All right, people. Well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Um, you know, I, you know, like I say, I, I don't mean to be too hard on the IFB. They got a lot of good things going on, but you know what? No. Not everybody can be saved. That's why God blinds their eyes. God, repentance, people, is a very, very serious thing. God wants his people to repent of their wickedness. You know, but that's the thing. First, you believe, and your works should follow what afterwards. I mean, John the Baptist taught repentance. Jesus taught repentance. Was he telling them to just believe? I mean, again, read the words of Jesus in Revelation chapter 2. The church at Ephesus, he told them to repent and do the first works. You know, Jesus isn't telling a believing church to repent of their unbelief. I mean, that's absolute stupidity. So, all right, all blessings, praise, uh, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.